Hey folks, this is Vince with Dad's Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to quickly check out Lab Partners. This is a game for 1 to 5 players, it's for ages 12 and up, and the average play time is roughly 30 minutes. It's important to stress that what you're looking at here is a prototype. The game will be seeking funding through the Kickstarter process at some point, so everything that you're about to see is most definitely subject to change. This video won't cover every single rule found in the rulebook, but will complement my written preview. I'll put a link to that in the below description. Okay, so what is Lab Partners all about? Well, the goal of this game is to earn $1 million in funding. That's what this money is over here on the right-hand side. There's two denominations, 250 k and 50 k So how do you get money, you ask? Well, you have to get these products. How do you make these products? Well, you have to form solutions. How do you form solutions? You guessed it. <laughs> use these chemical cards to form compounds. And you're going to use multiple compounds to form solutions and then grab the product that you are aiming to uh, create a solution for. Don't worry, I'll explain how that all works as we go through a sample turn. Because there's a lot of chaining going on here. You need this, then this, then this, then this, then this. Alright, so at the beginning of the game, there are three of these product cards that are flipped face up. There's the deck right here. Each product has a special ability on it. So, in addition to earning money when you create a product, you'll also get a special ability depending on what product you get. Some products allow you to reroll dice, others just grant you extra funding or extra money so that you can get closer to your victory point total of $1 million, and so on. Then you've got these chemical cards here. There are three different types. There's stabilizers, reagents, and catalysts. In order to create a compound, you need one stabilizer, one or more unique reagents, and one catalyst. You're going to be playing those cards together to form compounds. Now, you don't automatically form the compounds. That's what these dice are all about. You actually have to roll to see if you create these compounds. Each player also starts with a starting hand of four of these chemical cards. In addition to that, there's a rulebook. Again, this is a prototype rulebook. There are some advanced rules found in the back of the manual. I'll let you guys explore that on your own, but this is some of these advanced gameplay mechanics are like sabotage and take that kind of thing. So if you're trying to play a friendly game, I'd steer clear of these. Uh, there's also a solo play variant in the back of the rulebook, should you just want to play on your own. There's also these guide cards here. There's enough for each player. There's a front and back. Mainly, they give you uh, the product symbols. As I, I was mentioning earlier, these products have a special ability listed on the bottom, and they're all laid out here on these reference cards, in addition to what you would do on a typical turn. Speaking of a typical turn, what would you do? Well, the first thing you do on your turn is draw three cards from the chemical deck. Now, you can also take from the face-up display. Whenever you take a card from the face-up display, you'd simply immediately replace it. So let's just go ahead and do that now. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and do something like, I'll do that, and sure, I'll take this blue one, and I guess I'll take a red one. Now, if you don't like any of those, you can just take face down from the deck. That's possible, too. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at my hand and see what I might want to do. So I've got a number of different yellow and blue and red. And again, you're trying to create compounds with these cards by uh, creating a combination of cards. You're going to have, um, again, one catalyst, one stabilizer, and one or more unique reagents. Now, this would not be a unique reagent. Uh, both of these say meta on it, or meta on it. That's not a unique re reagent. Um, I'm sure there are more in the deck. Maybe I can show you a couple. There's Bola, for example. So if I had that, in addition to meta, I could play, uh, or there's Tetra, and so on. Okay, so to form a compound, what I would do is I would, let's say, now, again, after you draw three cards, then you enter the experiment or additional research phase. You can do experiments by forming cards, as I was explaining, by playing these chemical cards, or you can just draw three additional cards uh, if you want to in, in lieu of experimenting. But let's go ahead and experiment now so I can show you what that's all about. So again, um, I'm just going to do one of each card here. So there's a stabilizer, which is the prefix. I'm going to do just one of these reagents as the uh, middle. There's that. And I'm going to do, say, let's try and make this easy. It doesn't look like there's going to... Okay, so I'll just do that four. That's fine. Uh, and then there's this catalyst, which is the, the suffix. Okay, so in order for me to create this compound, I have to observe the numbers that are listed on these cards. There's a three, a two, and a four. 
So um, you may want to take note of these before just randomly playing different colored cards. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the number of dice that, of the cards that you played. So there's three cards here, so there's three dice. You're going to go ahead and roll them, and you're going to try and get to a value equal to or greater than the, the sum of these numbers here. So there's three, two, and four. That's nine. So let's just say I roll these dice, and that's a nine. So technically, I would succeed, greater than or equal to. I've just formed a compound. Go me. So these will just sort of sit here, and you'll be forming other compounds, and you can use those compounds to try and create solutions, which I'll get to in a minute. Should you fail a roll, let's say that I rolled horribly and, and did something, I don't know, like that. So that was, uh, what, 7, which is not greater than 9, or greater than or equal to 9. I would lose all but one compound in this case. So I'd, I'd go, oh, what, do, what do I have in my hand? Um, I've got a lot of reds, I don't have a lot of blues, so maybe I'll get rid of these two, and then try again later on. So I have to take that back and discard these two cards. But I did, I did succeed in that roll, so I'm just going to go ahead and just adjust these up, sure, whatever. Okay, so that's an example of what you would do during the experiment phase. If I could create a solution now, I could. You can create compounds, you can create solutions uh, during this phase. Um, you can also trade with other players uh, by saying, I'll trade you, say, one catalyst for a reagent, or two stabilizers for a reagent and a catalyst. So as long as you're trading an equal number of cards, you're allowed to trade with other players. Okay. Um, and after that, um, again, that once you redraw, you, could, you have the option to redraw after you're done experimenting. Redraw simply means discarding unwanted cards from your hand and drawing up to the number that you discarded. I'm not going to do that now, just, just for the sake of moving along. So let's just say that other players had taken their turn, and now it's come back to me. I would draw three more cards. One, two, three. Now I have the option to experiment or draw three additional cards. I'm going to go ahead and experiment. Let's say that, again, I attempt to create a compound. Let's just say I automatically succeeded by rolling dice. Let's say I did something like this. I needed to roll a two, four, and a three. It's a set nine. I, let's say I rolled that nine, and I'm good. So let's say I rolled it. I'm good. I create another compound. I'm, I'm doing very well. So now, um, now I can try and create a solution during the experiment phase. How do you create a solution? Well, you're going to first look at one of the products that you want. So let's say that I wanted to go for this one, the cookies and cream celery. Ugh. Okay, so <laughs> this has a reroll ability on it, uh, which you can verify via the guide card. But you're trying to roll a value between 5 and 9. Basically, you're going to take a number of dice equal to the number of compounds that are used to try and create this. In this case, it would be two, one for each compound. Okay? So I'm trying to reach a value of five, six, seven, eight, or nine. Let's say that I succeed and I rolled a uh, seven. Okay, that's between five and nine, right? So that means that I would get this permanently. Uh, this is an ability I can now use on my turn. It's a reroll ability. Um, I would also count up the money that's on each of these cards that were used. 100k and 50k. 50k is 200k here, and then another 150k over here. So I would earn that much money and put it into my score pile. Okay, so I'm, I'm on my way to getting my one million dollars. New product would come out, and then these would get discarded uh, appropriately. Okay, now if you happen to fail your roll, uh, it depends on how you fail it. If you are under the limit, let's say that I am under the five that I needed, uh, nothing happens. I simply pass and I'm, I'm okay. I don't discard anything. But if I'm above the uh, nine here, the, it's called the critical mass. But if I'm above that nine, then explosions happen, your lab is on fire, things go horribly wrong. Uh, you lose all but one compound that you use. So I'm going to have to discard an entire compound and just you know, keep the one that I have, okay? So, but I, I did succeed in, in my example, so that's just me. Anyway, so that's the gist of this game. Um, again, you're trying to create compounds, use those compounds to form solutions, to grab these products up here, and then that not only earns you money to win the game, but it also gets you a special ability that you can use later on. That is the general gist of it. Um, there, again, there are some rules that I didn't cover in the rulebook, but hopefully this gives you a small taste as to what you're in for should you decide to pick this up. As I mentioned, there is a solo play in the back of the rulebook. There's also some advanced rules, uh, including sabotage and so on. Okay. Well, if you guys haven't already, subscribed to me on Twitch and YouTube. That way you can stay up to date with any new content I've been to publish. This is Vince. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.